Hi, and welcome to this presentation of SAP Business One Inventory Control. Today, what we want to have a look at is the stock management inventory control and warehouse management functions inside the SAP Business One application. This is one of a series of presentations aimed at different functional areas within SAP Business One. So let's take 20 or so minutes and do an overview of the various functions and features available to help you manage your inventory control, your warehouse, movements of stock, maybe batch and serial traceability and elements like that. For those of you familiar with SAP Business One, you'll recognize this initial entry screen, which is my cockpit overview. In the center, I have a KPI dashboard, which in this instance is my stock counting recommendation. Over on the top right hand side, I've chosen to have my open documents. So for example, if I want to go directly to my open purchase orders, I can click, sort, go directly to a particular open purchase order, and there it is, dated today. Now, of course, I can drill down to the item in question. I can look at the inventory in each warehouse or bin location for that item. So what we're doing here is we're starting at a high level of information, drilling our way around to the information we want. Of course, I can have my common functions open here. So if I want to go straight to delivery notes, click on the button, straight into a delivery. Down the right hand side, my to-do list for today. So I can open up my scheduled to-do list and see what my activities are that I need to complete today. Amongst those activities might be elements like stock counting recommendations as part of my cycle counting that I may need to complete today, or chasing particular contracts or purchase orders, for example. So more than being a pure inventory control finance or production system, SAP Business One also incorporates into it workflow, messages and alerts, and other elements to help us run our business more effectively. Let's now go in specifically to the inventory control in SAP Business One. We're going to start with item master data, just to have a quick overview. Of course, I can do things like a wildcard search. If I type OFF star star, I can go in and I can call up the JB Office Print item. Now, the initial screen that I see here in terms of this master data, let's not forget that I can add my own fields. I can modify the formats of these fields by moving them around and change where they sit on the actual master data form so that I get master data forms to look and feel the way I want them to and to help me with the ease of data capture. So what you're seeing in front of you is the standard item master data form, but it can be changed. I obviously have the ability within SAP Business One to manage items by serial or batch numbers. So if I were, for example, in the food industry, I may be tracing items by lot or batch traceability. Whereas if I'm selling IT components or electronic components, I may be tracking items by serial numbers. And then I can decide, do I want to track on serial numbers on release only or on receipts and release, etc. So multiple rules I can set inside the system. But the point that I'm making there is that certainly traceability, both batch and serial number, standard within SAP Business One. I can obviously make the item inactive, let's say from today's date till the end of the month, the reason being a QA issue, quality issue, for example. I'll just take that inactive flag off for now. Of course, a default price here, the price this is an SAP Business One, I can import a supplier price list, I can have contract pricing, customer or supplier specific pricing, I can have volume based pricing, so lots of flexibility with regards to how I might set up my pricing uh, in SAP Business One. Purchasing data, I can have multiple units of measure. So for example, I might purchase this item in kilograms, but I use it on the production floor in grams. I might buy it in cases of 12, but I sell it in individuals. I can also keep my length, width, height, and volume calculations. This is very useful when calculating freight. So for example, if the supplier says that the freight is roughly $100, I can work that out based on the calculations of 
the volume, for example, of these items. Of course, nice and graphical in SAP Business One. Click on the button, see historically what I've bought of the item, and there it is graphically as well. Of course, the arrows represent drill downs, so I can at any point drill down to the source transaction. In terms of the inventory data for the item, multiple bins, multiple warehouses. So in SAP Business One, in terms of multiple bins, I might say that the items are in Warehouse One in Sydney, in the green zone, R3 location A1. This helps me narrow down the location for the item. So dynamic bin allocations. Obviously, min-max stock levels, for example. So I always want to keep a minimum of 100 of these in stock and a maximum of 2,000. This can be used for elements, for example, like material requirements planning, which is covered in a different presentation. But in terms of assisting us with our purchase planning, we may want to make sure that we always have, for example, the minimum stock available. Another option with inventory control, of course, is to put an alert on that minimum stock deviation. That way, if the stock of this particular JB office print goes below 100, the system will send an internal alert to the purchasing manager to purchase some more. Sales data, again, multiple units of measure on the sales data. So I purchase in kilograms, but I sell in grams. I purchase in units, but I sell in boxes, etc. Planning data, planning data around inventory control. We touched on this a few minutes ago, but material requirements planning or MRP can be used in terms of replenishment planning and purchase planning for production or for purchase planning around items that you purchase. Um, not covered in this presentation, covered in a different presentation, but what MRP will do in terms of stock control is it will balance your supply and demand. So your supply of the items coming in from your suppliers, potentially on purchase orders, your existing stock, your min-max stock levels, your demand coming from potentially forecast demand and sales orders. And then the system will balance those requirements to recommend purchase orders or works orders for purchasing or production. And again, these sorts of calculations here, the planning method, the procurement method, the order intervals, the order multiples, will help us and lead times with those calculations. Multiple properties against particular items, so I can put up to 64 different properties. This will help me to categorize or group together my items. So I might say this is an IT piece of equipment and it's a printer, for example. Then I can run a report for all IT printers. This JB office print will appear. Remarks against the items. I can put some text in here. Three-year warranty. Please note, available in three colors, for example. And attachments. I can have an attachment in here, which might be, for example, a technical specification against this item. So I can call up that technical specification and what it will then do is that technical specification then will allow me to attach it um, and to actually then go in and I can see I've just attached one here. This is an agreement for the delivery of services and inventory. I call that up and it will bring up, for example, the Word document. It doesn't only have to be a Word document. Um, it could, for example, be an Excel spreadsheet. It could be a PDF. Um, a technical specification, etc. So let's just update that inventory item. As I right click on the inventory item, I can see other things, activities. So I can put a note against this particular item. So a note might be, you know, please note limited availability. Okay. So I've got now a note against that particular item. I can see whether this is part of a bill of materials. This is very nice, alternative items. So I'm on the phone talking to a customer about this particular inventory item. And when I'm talking to the customer, I realize I don't have any in stock. I right click, I click on alternative items. And now I can see that I have two alternative items. One's a 90% match and the other a 99% match. Now I drill down, have a look at that item, have a look at how many I have in stock, recommend that item to the customer, explaining to them that it's not 100% fit, there is a marginal difference, what the marginal difference is. But again, SAP Business One is giving me instant access to information. I'm on the phone, I'm talking to the customer, I want to make sure I've got great customer service, I don't have the item in stock, I right click, alternative items, I look at what's available, I drill down, I talk to the customer about 
what we might be able to do to help them out. I can also do things if I'm on the phone talking to the customer, I could go and look at what's available to promise. So go to the available to promise report and see what's ordered, committed, available for this item. I can then drill down and see a particular, for example, purchase order related to this item. I can drill down and see a particular sales order relating to this item. So again, available to promise at the click of a button. I can do other things like inventory status and warehouse report, for example, purchase quotations created directly from here, other related features. Let's now go in to a few other functions and features. Barcodes, obviously the ability to print out barcodes and attach those to a palette, for example, um, so that you've got barcoding and, and potentially one could also have scanning um, associated with SAP Business One, multiple RF scanning solutions available in the market which integrate to SAP Business One if you want to have a wireless warehouse um, and scanning. Um, as I said, there are multiple solutions which are available in that regard. Bin locations in SAP Business One, the ability to have multiple bin locations. Um, you know, so the items are in bin A3, for example. A3 is full, so they're in A3, but there are also some in location A7 as an example. So again, helping you better manage your inventory and inventory locations. Serial numbers and batch numbers, the ability to go in and obviously um, look at your serial numbers and you know what items are where, etc. bar serial number, when did they come into the warehouse, when did they go out of the warehouse so that you've got traceability of the serial numbers or the batches. Often used in industries like food and medical, for example, you may have batch traceability and in IT, very often serial number traceability. Alternative items, we've touched on uh, the ability to keep alternative items um, inside SAP Business One. Let's look at inventory transactions, a good receipt into the warehouse. So in terms of SAP Business One, you can raise a purchase request that can get approved, a purchase order with approval, and then a good receipt into the warehouse, or I could simply go in and do a good receipt. So again, total flexibility in terms of the way we can handle the transaction of getting the goods into the warehouse. Inventory transfer requests, so the ability to transfer um, inventory items. I can also do inter-warehouse transfers, obviously. I can do recurring transactions, a uh, common theme throughout SAP Business One, but the automation of recurring transactions. Inventory counting transactions, so I can have a look at inventory counting. Um, I can make inventory counting recommendations. So I might categorize my items, for example, um, A, B, and C items. A being most important, I want to count once a month. B being relatively important, relative costs, I want to count once a quarter. And C, low cost items once a year. When it comes to doing the counting, I can have the system make counting recommendations. So on the first Friday of every month, I want you to count these items. The system will actually inform the warehouse manager or the stock manager, these are the items I want you to count today through an alert. In this instance, I can also say that I want a single counter or multiple counter, multiple being two people counting the same items as a double check. But again, I can go in, let's just call up a particular item. I can freeze the item when I'm doing the count. I can say which bin location it's in. When I count that item out, I simply go in. Okay, I say which warehouse am I in? I'm in warehouse number one, which location? And I go in and I can do the count then on those particular items, for example. Um, on the subject of stock counts, obviously you can also do annual stock counts and other related stock counts as well. Price this, multiple price this, the ability to import supplier price this into SAP Business One. In terms of picking the items in SAP Business One, so I get a sales order, I want to now pick that stock, I can use what's called the Pick and Pack Manager. The Pick and Pack Manager is the ability in SAP Business One to facilitate the picking process. So here I want to manage by sales order, I first want to pick by required date, then by sales employee, by document date, etc. I've got a list of different criteria, and this is going to assist me with the pick process on the shop floor, and then pushing that pick process through potentially something that's printed out on the shop floor in the warehouse to be printed, or alternatively, as I said, there are multiple third party um, applications if I wanna then go to full RF type scanning as well, very commonly used by our SAP Business One customers with a full wireless warehouse for a seating dispatch and potentially stock take as well. 
In terms of the inventory control, what we've seen then is in SAP Business One, a complete inventory control process. Batch traceability, serial traceability, um, the ability to plan your purchasing using material requirements planning. We just touched on that. It is covered in a separate presentation on MRP specifically. Uh, the ability in SAP Business One to do into warehouse transfers, look at that stock availability, by warehouse and those sorts of elements. In terms of the reporting, multiple standard reports. So let's have a look at a few of those. Firstly, for those people who are familiar with SAP Business One, um, as I pull up a report in SAP Business One, then typically I get multiple options inside that report. So I pull up a report and then the system will say to me, for example, an inventory status report, which codes do you want to look at? Or which suppliers, which item groups, which properties? So you might say, I just want to have a look at an inventory status report for these properties of items or for these item groups, for example. And there's your report, in stock, committed, ordered, available, etc. Okay, nice, quick, simple, easy access to information. A bin location, a content list, a price report, a discount group report, serial number transactions reports. So I've got an issue with a particular serial number. I want to know when I sold it, when did I receive it. I can use the serial number transactions report. Here it is here. And that will tell me, for example, that's the document it went out on. And there's the delivery note. And then I can drill down to that actual delivery note. So I can see it went out in 2006, so some time ago. Again, the importance of zero number tracking is to be able to get from uh, the high level information to the exact information. What was the delivery note the item went out on and when did it go out? Price reports, inactive items reports. So give me a list of all of my inactive items. My inventory and warehouse reports. So what inventory have I got in which warehouses, for example? Last prices report. This is very nice. So let's say I want to have a look at for um, Earthshaker Corporation, the 1420 office prints. I can see now what we sold that item for previously to them, or if it was a supplier, what we bought the item for. So again, this is very handy. I'm on the phone talking to the supplier, talking to the customer. The customer says, that's not, not what I normally pay. I don't normally pay $875. I can call up this quick, easy report, drill down to the information I want. Okay, so lots of different options in reporting. I can also have SAP Crystal Reports embedded. So here's an example. Let's give it a nice big date range because this is demo data. We'll select the items. Again, we get the choice of selecting multiple warehouses, multiple items, and Crystal Reports embedded into SAP Business One, a stock turnover analysis. Stock valuation method report, again, crystal reports embedded into SAP Business One. Other options in terms of reporting, let's not forget that I can also, in terms of the reporting in SAP Business One, I can use uh, multiple different reporting options. Uh, let's just call up another item. We'll call up that one there. Minimize that slightly. Um, I can also use, for example, drag and relate. So, I can take this particular item code, drag it over the information that I want, let it go, and it will give me more information about that particular item. Okay, so again, it's something that we commonly use in SAP Business One. So what warehouses are available, etc. So I can move around, get lots of instant access to information directly from within SAP Business One. So what we see then with the inventory control is a true end-to-end -end process. Receiving the stock into the warehouse, managing the stock through the warehouse, the interstock transfers through to multiple reports available inside the system. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Please don't forget that there is more information available on our website at leveragetech.com.au. Thank you and I hope you enjoyed the presentation.